Hello everyone and welcome to Daz Studio's Beginner's Guide Part 2. In this video we will be framing our scene with a camera and using the three point lighting method to light our scene. And I will also go over the render settings. Let's get started. So here we are in Daz Studio and let's continue with our scene. So first thing I need to do is load my scene. So I need to go to file here and click on open and find part one. I think we saved it as there's part one and click open and Das Studio will load the scene. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, there we are, great. So the first thing we're going to do is actually frame our scene with our camera. So currently we're in the perspective view and my actual camera frame is this here, this outline here, which is a 16 by nine ratio. And you can change this quite easily. If you go to render settings here and go to general, click on general, and then where it says here dimension preset global. If I click on the drop down menu here, you can choose what you want to your framing. So for example, I think normally uh, the default is set to active viewport. So basically the whole active viewport window is your frame and anything in this will be um, the camera, will be your camera. I generally set it to quad HD because that's how I do my images, which is a 16 by nine ratio. So you can choose what you wish to choose. If you want to choose active viewport, that's fine. If you want to choose something else, that's fine as well. I will go with the uh, quad HD because that's what I generally use. Okay, so now that we've got that sorted, what we need to do next is add our thirds guide. So we click on the option here and make sure show thirds guide is on. And then you'll see these, uh, these yellow lines and it's all divided into nine sections. So thirds guide is a popular photography use where you would use the thirds guide to balance your images and compositions. So it creates a more balanced uh, composition, more balanced scene, um, and it's more pleasing to the eye. So now that we've got that on, we'll use the tools here to move our perspective view camera into the position we would like our actual camera to be. So I'll use the pan tool, just the pan here. So our third guide, what we need to do is kind of, because we are focused on this figure here, we want to split the figure into thirds. So we want to have an even spread of kind of the, the middle of the body here, the legs and the head here. So that may mean you have to zoom out a bit so you can get the figure into view. Another tip would be, is to is to actually have this model, this figure on this corner here. So if we move across here, like so, if I just move it across there and we're just trying to get it where it's kind of, you've got like a third of the body here at the top, the neck, the shoulders up. You've got the kind of middle section here and then you've got the bottom section here. Um, another tip is generally when you're doing portraits like these or figure shots like this, you want to leave a bit of room at the top here where the head is. And at the bottom here, it's not too bad. You don't need to leave a lot of room. It's just that it looks a lot better. So for example, if I moved it down like this, that to me looks kind of strange. It's not, it's not ideal. I mean, you could have something like that, but it's not ideal. So I'll just move that back up there. Okay. So another tip is if, for example, my character's head was looking like that to the right, actually I might do that. I might just leave it there. Looking like that to the right, you want to kind of leave this bit open, you want to, you, for example, guide the guide the person looking at the your image, saying, "Oh, they're looking over there, so there's something happening over there." So you leave, for example, you you're kind of leading the person looking at your image that they're looking at something over there. So you wouldn't have something like, for example, like this. If I just did this, something like that, for example. 
because obviously she's looking over there, your figure's looking on that side, and you're showing this, which is it's not very which is not very good because you want to lead the person. You're trying to tell a story. You're trying to tell. You're trying to create a story, some sort of with your images. So what you need to do is think about how how and what you want the person looking at your image, what kind of story are you trying to create, what kind of feelings are you trying to emote from your image. So I'll move that back again. So I'm just going to get this fairly right. It doesn't have to be perfect. That looks decent to me. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got our we've got our cam uh, our camera set up in the perspective view. Now, obviously, we don't want our frame in the perspective view because that when you save your scene and then load it up again, you'll lose your camera setting. So how do we get our actual physical camera? What we need to do is we need to go to create at the top here. Click on create, click on new camera. And then very important, I think you need to make sure that the show options button here, you click on that so you get more options. And then you want the second option. Copy active view, perspective view. And what this will do is when I press accept, it will literally just place the camera exactly where the perspective view is. So if I click accept, there you go. And camera one will appear in the scene tab. And if we go click on our uh, views here and then click on camera, here it is now. And there it is. We're, we're in camera one and there's the view, there's our camera. It's set perfectly. Okay. And that's, that's all to do with cameras, really. The kind of basic of framing your scene. Okay, so our scene is already framed. Our camera is there. Our fr we framed our scene and we've got, we've put the camera where we want to and how we want to portray our image. That's great. And now we're going to light our scene. And the lighting system we're going to use is the standard three point light setup. Uh, which is used in photography as well. So it's a it's a setup that's, you know, tried and trusted. Um, so let's start. So let's uh, do our three point light setup. So how do we create lights? So we go to here at the top, create, click on create. And you've got different lights here. You've got distant light, spotlight, point light, linear point light. Um, I will go through these other options, uh, linear point light, point light and distant light in another tutorial but for now we will be using the spotlight so if we click on spotlight and give it a name and since we're using our three point light setup we will be calling this the key light which is our main light and click accept and what you should see what you'll see is that everything goes dark now the reason why everything goes dark is because since we've added a a spotlight that studio knows that we've added a spotlight and automatically turns off the headlamp that that the camera we that the of the camera that we're using. So we're in camera one view, and the headlamp on that camera has been automatically turned off. So let's. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, it's quite difficult to see what we're doing with this. Uh, we'll click on our perspective view and we'll choose our key light. Uh, so this is the view of our key light. So every time you add a spotlight, uh, any sort of light, it's always on the zero axis. So it will be on the zero Z axis, zero Y axis, zero X axis. So it's basically always at the bottom of your image. So we can obviously use these orbit tools, pan tools, and zoom tools to, to place our light in the correct position. So I'm going to pan up. And then I'm going to zoom out using my mouse wheel. Now, I definitely recommend uh, you download the free, my free um, DAS lighting tips and trick guide, which uh, the link is available in the description box. And that will give you more insight into the different lighting methods you can use uh, to light your scenes. Um, so I definitely recommend that because obviously when you're starting something like this, you need some sort of reference point, And I believe that guide is a very good reference point. Right, so what am I trying to do here? So here's my fill light, uh, sorry, my key light. And what I'm trying to do here is mimic the natural, mimic natural light. So where does natural light come from? Natural light comes from the sun. And where is the sun? The sun is in the sky. So I want my light to be coming 
from an angle. It doesn't really matter what angle the light comes at, as long as it's coming from an angle at the top, like for example, like the sun, it doesn't have to be exactly, for example, say 45 degrees or 30 degrees. Um, as long as it's coming from an angle from above, that's fine. So I will just position this a bit higher up and then use my orbit tool to kind of point at my figure. Right. And that looks okay to me. Might zoom out a bit actually, because I want a bit more of the figure. Right, that looks fine. Okay, so that's our key light done. So let's add our fill light. So create new spotlight, call it fill light, click accept. So there it is, you can see it there. So we need to choose here, remember from our, pre, our view, our view menu, click here and then choose fill light. And again, remember, like I said, it's on the zero axis. That's the way it always is, like the default setup. So we need to zoom up, um, pan up, sorry. I need to zoom out. And I want to move this to the right of the key light. So my key light is over there. So I want to move it a bit higher up and point it here. I want to move across a bit more actually. So I don't want to be, I don't want to put my, I don't want to put my light directly in, in sight, in the direct sight line of the actual figure. You want to move it um, across because you want to, what you're trying to do essentially with the lighting is to, is to create definition in the, is to create definition in your, in your, on your figure. So is to, is to basically get the features of your figure to appear using the lights. Okay. For example, if we just use one light that was directly straight at, so if we had, for example, I've got a camera here. We had one light that was directly straight at our figure like this. You wouldn't see these shadows here and these definitions and these features of our of our figure. It would look like a plain image, and we don't want that. So that's why we use three point lighting uh, in this case. Obviously, if you were doing some other sort of scene, you probably wouldn't use three point lighting. You would probably use the other methods that are in my um, in my DAS tutorial uh, DAS Studio tutorial or uh, tips and trick guide, uh, lighting tips and trick guide. So you would probably use something like that, or you would just probably use maybe one light if you were doing something else. So it all depends on what you're trying to portray. Generally, you would use a three point lighting setup to do images like this. Okay, so I think that's all set up. And our last thing is we need a backlight. So again, create a new spotlight, call it back, let's move that way, back light, accept, go to our view, view menu and our camera view menu and go to backlight, click on that. Okay, same thing, pan up, but this time we're going to come from the back because we want to create separation from the back, this background here and our figure, our subject. We want to create separation. Okay, so uh, what we're trying to do now is we are obviously trying to get as high as we can. We can't go too high because obviously it's the building. And if we go too high, we will just kind of lose our lose our figure there. So I'm going to go down a bit, just a slightly bit. There we go. Just enough to clear that bit there. And what I'm trying to do is point it. Probably, there we go, is point it opposite the fill light. So normally your backlight would be placed opposite the fill light. Okay, so that looks good. So if we do a quick render, so we go to our camera, we do NVIDIA iRay, View, view our render. 
So this is just a quick preview just to see what it looks like. I will, after, after this is previewed, I'll go into more of the settings because obviously at the moment, the light that's being created is very harsh light. And we don't want harsh light, we want soft light. And I'll show you how to do the soft light as soon as this render is done, this little preview. Obviously we've got lights now, so we've got three lights. So the time it takes to render will take, uh, do a preview render will take a bit longer. Uh, even when you finally do the render, it will take a bit longer to do. So there's a preview of our image. Um, it looks okay, but we can certainly do a lot better by changing the settings of the lights. So let's go and do that now. So let's go back to our, back to our texture shaded draw style. And let's start with the key light. So let's go to key light. And so on a, in our scene tab, I want to click the key light so I can see my key light settings. And then over here, when I go down into the parameters tab, I've got param I've got all the settings for my key light because that's what I've highlighted here. And I want to click on light. So for every light, you have all these settings, illumination on, which is quite self-explanatory, which means is the light on or off? Um, the color of the light. The intensity, so how bright you really want it. Uh, photometric mode, that's always on. Spread angle, so how much you want the light to spread. The default, these are, these are all the default settings. I haven't changed anything here. These are all the default settings. So what we need to do, if we want our light to be soft light, like a soft box like they would use in photography, we change our light geometry to rectangle or disc. I generally choose rectangle, that seems to work best for me. And then we need to change the height and width of the rectangle. So generally I always start off with 100, which seems to work very well. Obviously you could play around with these settings, you can go bigger or smaller depending on how you want to um, portray your image. And then the next important setting is the lumens. So at the moment it's at 1500, which is quite low. I generally start at 500,000. You're probably thinking that's too much. You'll see why I start at 500,000. So that's 500,000. So if I go back to my camera and I go back to doing a preview you should see some difference so you can see there how bright it is that's on a 500,000 lumen setting so while that's rendering I will just while that's rendering I will just uh, talk about this so we've got the temperature here as well so this is the Kelvin temperature scale so generally the default is always set to the G default is always set to 6500 and for this purpose, I will set it to 4000. Now 4000 Kelvin will change the light to a kind of daytime, kind of daytime, kind of sunrise type kind of light. So if I click on that and then change it to that, you'll see the difference. So you can see the difference there. It's changed from a really like a white light to more like a sunlight kind of color. So that's what we're using. That's what we'll be using in this scene, for example. Now 500,000 is quite a lot. I might actually bring that down to about 300,000. Let's see how that looks. That looks okay. That looks fine. So obviously it depends on what you're trying to portray, what kind of image you want. You can play around with these settings. You may not like 300,000. You may choose 200,000, 100,000, 50,000, 70,000. That's up to you. Um, generally, I always start off with 500,000 and work my way down. Um, so this looks all right to me. So we'll leave that setting there. Uh, and now we will go to the fill light. So I'm, what I'm going to do is leave the actual iRay preview render on and just click on fill light here and then we can change the settings and see what happens in real time. Okay so the same thing we're going to do here set the light geometry to rectangle set it to 100 set the height and width to 100 okay 
and lumens so the fill light the lumens and the fill light will always be less than what we set on the key light so in the key light we set it to 300,000 so obviously the fill light will not be 300,000 it'll be less so probably start off with something like I don't know 100,000 say and then obviously we need to change our temperature to 4,000 and that's our fill light there so if I for example if I turn my fill light here if I made it invisible you can see the difference the fill light makes so you can see we've got shadows here shadows there so when we do our fill light you'll see how that shadow softened a bit and this here as well and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to create shadows there are shadows there but more not harsher shadows more like soft shadows so that's what we're trying to do make the make the image softer so that's our fill light done and now we're going to do our backlight so click on backlight here leaving that eye array setting here so we can see the different uh, what happens uh, in real time so again we will change our geometry to rectangle our height to 100 height diameter our width to 100 and for our backlight the backlight will always be less than the fill light so our fill light was set to 100,000 so our backlight has to be less than 100,000 you can obviously play around with the settings. I may start up with half of that. So we'll start off, say, 50,000. And there's our backlight setting, 50,000. And our temperature, sorry, we got to set our temperature to 4,000. There we go. So if I just come out of this setting, go back to text shaded, and if we go back to perspective view so if I just zoom I just want to move the camera and show you what the backlight is doing so if I just turn this around and then go to NVIDIA iRay see a preview it's probably not the best there we go You can probably see the actual backlight is not positioned correctly as you can see this area here is the main focus of the backlight the backlight should actually be more or less so we've got here look, that's our main focus of our backlight it shouldn't really be there it should really be kind of around this area so what we need to do is we need to move our backlight so what you'll find is when you're making your scenes you'll have to chop and change things and move things around um, because sometimes it doesn't look that well look that good and you need to just move things so obviously it doesn't matter how experienced you are you're always going to be like you're always going to be changing things so if I go out of texture shaded view here go back to my backlight here and just bring that down a bit here there we go that looks good okay that looks a lot better right so we've got our camera settings we've got our light settings Let's see how that looks one final time. And we are ready to create our actual render. And I can go through the actual render settings with you now. We just wait for this preview to, to do again. Just one final check before I actually click the, go through the render settings and click that render button. So as you're watching this, if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button. Um, leave a comment down below let me know if you what you 
if you have any questions leave it down below in the comment section comment section and write in the comments anything else in the comments anything else you'd like to see so there's our image looks looks really good okay happy with that so let's just take off our setting again go back to text shading uh, the reason I keep going back to text shading is because it's a lot quicker to move around um, even though if you have a powerful PC um, with the you know Nvidia two with dual dual um, Nvidia graphics card you could probably leave the IRA on and, and move around IRA the Nvidia IRA uh, draw style on and move around but in my case I like to always get out and and go to texture shading and, and it just makes it a lot more quick to move around okay so that's all done great happy with that now let's go to our render settings so render settings that's stuff on the top so in our render settings we have general so this is the the quality of your render that you want so you can choose the settings what you want generally i have quad hd um you can have 720p whatever you want to choose so quad hd so these are just the, the settings the sizes so obviously if you click on something like this it will change the framing of your of your scene and you'll have to re move you'll have to move your camera to the correct position again so if i set that back to quad hd it'll go back to our setting uh, all these settings are fine still image so that will render this the current image here which is this here in our scene uh render target so the render will be in a new in a new window which i which will show you in a bit that just says where it will be saved so image path is the render library which is normally saved in your documents folder and auto headlamp here when no scene lights so what this means is when there are no scene lights so at the moment we've got three scene lights key light fill light backlight when the when none of these are available the auto headlamp on the camera will come back on so generally you want to set that to when no scene so no scene lights and the post process script we don't use so we leave that to none so render mode render mode is always set to photo real i mean there are other options but we always set photo real uh progressive rendering okay so this one this is all the actual settings in the in the, the rendering these are the actual rendering settings so generally we would leave all these settings set on the default except for max samples so we want to drag that all the way up to 15,000. So what max samples is, it will, every time, every sample the renderer goes through, the IRA renderer, it will do it up to 15,000 maximum. So that would mean you would get a more clearer, clearer image at the end of your, clearer rendering at the end. So there'll be less pixelation and more clearer image okay rendering quality we always set that to on uh, rendering quality enable sorry set that to on uh, rendering quality here um, sometimes if i'm doing if i'm leaving a render overnight i would and i want really a really high quality i would set that to five or ten in this case i'm going to leave it on zero because that's 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 fine for now uh, rendering converge ratio so generally set that to 95 percent uh, which is the default is fine um, you could set that higher up to 100 percent but then that would mean your actual render would go for many many hours um, and it's not particularly something you'd want to do unless you wanted a very very high quality image that you were going to for example uh, you know create a, a, a creative for say an art gallery or something or some sort of magazine spread or something if you want a very very high quality image okay next setting is the alpha so generally we just leave this as the default settings which works great uh, optimization we would leave that as well general settings just, just leave it as it is uh, filtering filtering now this is the important bit noise filter enable make sure you have that on and then leave it as on the default settings for now uh, what this noise filter does is when you render your image the noise on your image will be decreased 
Um, so it's not as noisy. For it, it won't be there won't be that many pixelations in your image. Um, so that's that settings fine. Uh, spectral rendering we leave that as it is off. Tone mapping we'll leave that off as well. Um, the reason why I'm going through this very quickly is because I'll cover most of these uh, settings in a tutorial further down. I just want to show you what these are uh, very quickly, an overview, uh, and I'll go into details later on. So uh, for example here, tone mapping is something you can use to increase the um, increase the lighting in your scenes and, and other settings. Okay, so in the environment settings, you've got the environment mode, dome and scene, infinite sphere, draw dome. At the moment, we haven't got the, if we clicked on the draw dome setting, it would draw the actual environment map as a background. Uh, we don't want that because we've got our background here, which is our pergola. And you've got different settings here, environment intensity, environment map. I'll cover all these in more detail in our, in another tutorial. Uh, but for now, that's fine. Our render settings fine. Our progressive rendering settings are on point 15,000. Our filtering, our noise is on point. Okay. And now we can hit the, the render button, the lovely blue button here, press render. And then off it goes. It starts rendering. So this is the actual, this is a preview of the actual render that's happening. Your image is being rendered. Obviously nothing showing up here. If I click back on here, you'll see. Oh, that's wrong. There we go. So you'll see the, you'll see that if you click on history here, you'll see what it's actually doing. So at the moment, it stays at 0% for quite a while. And then eventually it will start getting a bit quicker. Obviously we've added lights and things now, so it's going to take a lot longer to render. So it's going through the iterations. So if I check my, there we go, our render is being created. So what I'll do is I don't know how long this is going to take. I think it might take up to 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I will fast forward the video and then go through the render in a bit. Okay. So we're back here, 99%, nearly done. So it's taken nearly nine, nine minutes, 10 minutes to do that. There we go. Just under nine minutes, maybe 10 minutes, 10 minutes, nine minutes, just under nine minutes to do that image to create our render. Now, obviously that depends on if you've got loads of items and props in your scene, the more items and props you have, the more complicated it is, the more lighting you have, etc. the longer it will take. Now, obviously that also depends on the power of your machine. So you need to have obviously uh, an, an NVIDIA uh, graphics card. Uh, I will put my, uh, the specs of my machine in the description, uh, description below. And you can see the specs of my machine. And obviously if you've got something better than that, then your rendering is gonna be a lot quicker. If you obviously don't have an NVIDIA uh, graphics card and you have say an AMD graphics card uh, to render but you can still create images it will just take a, a longer time right so let's have a look out at our final result so that's our final result so if you scroll down you can we can scroll down to see here and you can scroll across as well obviously here using our scroll bars so you can see how soft that shadow is. If we didn't have the, didn't, for the lighting, if we didn't put the rectangle setting and the, for the lighting, then that obviously shadow would have been very harsh. And that looks good. We can see the definition here of the abs a bit, which is great, which is what we're looking for with our three point lighting. And here as well, we can see the kind of facial features of our figure here. Right, so let's save that. How do we save it? So in the here in the name bit in the name box, you would save it as so we can save it as I'm going to save it as part two and press save. And that will go into your render library. Obviously you can change that. I always I always let all my renders go into the default render library, which is in your my documents folder. Um so that's part two, press save. 
and that's saved great so we'll save this as well so if you go to file save as scene and I want to save it as part two oops I can't spell part part two press save okay so that's our tutorial part two finished what I'm going to do is a bonus video uh, where I'll take that image into Photoshop and show you how you can use Photoshop to enhance that image. Make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment below and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.